G'day gorgeous, my name is Amanda Jane Clarkson and welcome to episode number four of the G'day Gorgeous podcast that empowers women for life. The title of this week's podcast is The Secret to Loving Exercise. So if you're a woman and you struggle with the idea of exercise every day and you do not love getting out of bed, pulling on your gym clothes, pounding the pavement or going to the gym, I completely understand. As a personal trainer for many years, I have heard every story under the sun of why women don't love to exercise. Now, before we get into the juice, this podcast is for women who dare to live their dreams, and I hope that is you, for the woman who craves more from her life than conformity and what society expects, and for the woman who want more certainty, more clarity, and more confidence. The podcast is raw, it's real, and it is relatable for every woman because on this podcast, we cover the good, the bad, and the downright bloody ugly stories and life lessons that take us from feeling frustrated in any area of our life to feeling fabulous and becoming successful. So who am I? So who am I, I should say? Well, I'm Amanda Jane, as I said. I am a best-selling author. I have recently just released a brand new book that I wrote for women, From My Heart to Yours. It is called From Frustrated to Fabulous, an inspirational guide for women who dare to live their dreams. I'm an inspirational speaker. I speak around the world and I am now a wealth and a lifestyle coach to my women inside our community. But what I love doing the most is helping women go from feeling frustrated to fabulous and becoming successful in all seven areas of their life, which are our love, our health, relationships, our money, vocation, which is a job, career, or your business, happiness, and personal growth following my very powerful and potent Live Now Freedom Formula, which I cover throughout the different podcasts as we go along. So this week, we're talking about the power of visualization and visualizing the dreams or the outcomes that you want to create in each of the seven areas of your life following the Live Now Formula. However, today we are going to talk about the secret to loving exercise instead of thinking about exercise and feeling sick or hating the idea of it. So to share a little bit of a story, as I said, I was a personal trainer for many years. Uh, I studied to become a personal trainer in 1998 for a couple of years. And in the year 2000, I opened my own personal training studio. I was so proud and I absolutely loved being a personal trainer. My studio was called Royal Personal Training. So why did I call my studio Royal Personal Training? For one reason only. I wanted my clients to feel important, worthwhile, and valuable. I wanted, to, I wanted them to feel special every time they turned up to have a personal training session with myself. And that was about the only thing in my life that I hadn't failed at. Right up until that business, I was, I, I was literally a failure at everything. I failed everything at school. I'd had 33 different jobs and that business was my third business. I won't get into the other two businesses because I'm going to leave that for another podcast because if you've listened to my previous podcast, you will know that I have started 14 different businesses from scratch, 10 miserable failures and four successful businesses. And those successful businesses were businesses that I truly loved with my heart and soul and businesses that served and helped other people get what they wanted in life. And so my royal personal training business was one of those businesses. And 
So we would attract people um, usually from the age of 30 to the age of 65. And my main clients were women, women, I'd say in their 40s to their 60s. And they'd come to me with all the reasons under the sun why they hated exercise, all the excuses under the sun why their body was falling to pieces while they were in bad shape or their health was, you know, heading south or, you know, their their bum was heading south or their boobs were drooping or their arms were floppy. Like it was, <laughs> we used to laugh out, laugh our heads off at all the excuses and the reasons why they hated exercise. In fact, I used to say, I'm going to write another book called Excute-itis. I tell you what, there is nothing I haven't heard in the form of excuses when it comes to exercise. And so I made it my business to think of ways that I could really get women to fall in love First of all, with who they were, but second of all, with the idea of physical uh, exercise and strength training. And I would rack my brain thinking, how am I going to get these women to want to come and see me week after week after week? So there was a couple of things that we did that were smashing hits and it really worked. And I want you to make sure you've got your journal in your hand and your um, nice cup of tea. I've always got a nice cup of tea when I do these podcasts and I have my journal with me at all times because as you know, I always leave you with an empowering life success lesson um, throughout the podcast and I want you to take notes. You might get little snippets of ideas or I might drop a golden gem and you might think, thanks Amanda, I could really implement that into my life uh, and that would help me go from feeling frustrated with my health and well-being to feeling confident and fabulous and successful because that is the outcome of this podcast. So back to the story, I would think of ways to help women want to turn up for their exercise um, session with me every week. So what we used to do is I had a little studio and I absolutely loved it. So we painted all the walls really bright and beautiful colors. Uh, I think there was a green one, a pink one and a blue one and an orange one so that every time somebody walked in First of all, the studio felt bright and it felt friendly and we'd always have music playing and um, there was only women that worked in my personal training studio with me. At the time, there was only one other lady. Her name was Lisa and we would wear a uniform so that when our ladies walked in the door, they didn't feel threatened by what we looked like or who we were and you know, we didn't want to come across as all buffed up and in perfect shape and health, which we probably weren't at the time, but we wanted to really make the client feel special, important, valuable and worthwhile. It wasn't about us. So we wore a particular uniform that was non-threatening. So when they walked through the door, the place was all lovely and colorful. The music was, you know, uplifting. Back then it was, you know, in the 90s, so it had the 80s music playing. Cast your mind back, ladies. That was such great music in the 80s, wasn't it? And all of a sudden they would be, they'd be feeling relaxed and would have a nice cup of tea waiting for them or a glass of water, mince out on the desk and, you know, would make sure we were always uplifting and have some fun. Now, our personal training sessions, sessions were only 30 minutes in length of time. And so straight away, they weren't coming in thinking, oh my God, I've got to be with Amanda now for the next hour. She's going to be poking and prodding and pinching me and telling me I'm this, that, and, you know, feeling unworthy about themselves. No, 30 minutes was all they had. And I was one of these personal trainers that was always on time. I greeted everyone with a smile and a cuddle because I wanted them to relax and not feel threatened or not be looking for the exit before they even started their exercise. And so 
what we used to do from there is that every week we would have a plan on what we were going to do with the training session already pre-written for them. We'd have all the exercises written out that we wanted to work through and there weren't that many so we used to keep it short and sharp. But the main thing is this, this is how we became super successful in that particular business and I loved it. When the ladies came in, we would take them into a room and we'd just sit down and chat with them. And we used to literally say, you know, where in your life are you feeling most frustrated? Where in your health and well-being do you feel that you've let yourself down or do you feel that it's not where you hoped it would be or you know what would you love to improve in your life what would you love your health and fitness to be like what would you love it to feel like and instead of getting the you know the the snippers out to see well let's measure how much fat you have let's get on the scales and see how heavy you are we never did any of that we would have a conversation with these women to just get to know them, to get them to open up and share with us how they were feeling about their health and well-being, how they were feeling about their current fitness. And then one day I came up with the idea and then of course after that would go into our training routine. But instead of, you know, poking and prodding them, like I just said, measuring how much fat they had on their body or saying, oh, you know, you really need to lose weight, love, or, you know, you really should be thinking about this or thinking about that. Here's what we used to do. I would say to the ladies, share with me a certain outfit, whether it be a dress or a pair of jeans or a bikini, or a pair of bathers, or a swimming outfit that is, or just something that you would love to fit back into. Not something that you wore when you were a child, but something, you know, in the past 12 to 18 months that you have slightly grown out of, you know, um, it might be a special dress or something like that, that you would love to fit back into. If you came to see me, once a week for 30 minutes and we got serious and we I helped you with your strength training, I helped you with your nutrition, I helped you with your huffy puffy exercise, you know, what would that look like? What would be the one item of clothing that you would love to fit back into and that would make you feel amazing, that would make you feel special. Special. It would make you feel sexy. It would make you feel vibrant. It would make you feel more youthful. It would make you feel like the old you again. What would that one item be? And without a doubt, every time I asked that question to a woman or a young lady, I would see the eyes light up and her mind go back to a moment in time where she did feel good about her body image. She did feel sexy. She did feel trim. She did feel taut and terrific. And now I'm going to ask you to cast your mind back. If you're one of these women who feel the same way as the women did that when I used to train them, you know, perhaps you can think about a time in your life that you had an outfit that you would love to get back into. And so what we used to do is I would say to this, these women, bring the outfit with you every time you come to see me each week, bring the dress or bring the pair of jeans with you. And we would literally hang the dress or the pair of jeans or the outfit on the wall in the room that they were training in. Now, my question is for you, what do you think happened? When they came in to see me, they'd have the dress in their hand or the whatever they wanted to fit back into, would hang it on the wall. Do you think that they'd drop the excuses? You betcha. They would say to me, Amanda, you know, this is the dress that I want to fit back into. I used to feel really good when I had this dress, uh, when I used to wear this dress. It fitted me like a glove and, you know, my partner would take me out on a date or I'd wear it somewhere special on Sunday or, you know, they always felt good when they wore that item of clothing. And then what we would do would go through our 30 minutes of training, whether it was cardio, I call that high 
puffy, puffy exercise, cardiovascular training or strength training. And then the whole time we would keep our eye on the prize. Now, that's what I call visualization and the power of seeing something and believing in the outcome before you see the result. And that is the true message. That is the lesson that I want to share with you today. The empowering life lesson is believing before you see the results. And that's one thing I am really into. And I think I shared with in my very first podcast in the introduction that I am sitting in my home right now. This is a studio that's been built in my home for this very purpose. And I've made dozens and dozens and dozens of um, educational videos in this studio behind me. But I'm also sitting in my dream home. My dream home was a dream for 20 years that began in my mind when I was dead broke. I had no money no clue, no idea of how I was going to create the dream that I had in my mind. And for 20 years, I carried around a scrapbook stuffed with images and pictures. The house is kind of like an American style Hamptons home. And I love America. Um, I spend a lot of time in America. We, we go there two to three times a year. And I love, love, love your style of homes in America. If you're an American, um, if you're from America and you're listening to this podcast, well, I love your style of homes. And so this is the home that eventually my husband built for us after many, many years. But going back to the story of visualization and the power of seeing something. And so just by concentrating on this outfit that was hung on the wall, the women would drop the excuses. They would be inspired to turn up to the training session every week with me just for 30 minutes. We would talk about the outfit. We would talk about where they're going to wear it, how the outfit would make them feel when they used to put it on. And then here's my second little trick that you can write down in your journal. This works like magic. And in fact, I call it my magic outfit. And so here's what happens. Here's how I stay inspired to do exercise. Well, I exercise seven days a week, and I'm not suggesting that you need to exercise every day of the week, but at least four to five days a week, even if it's for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you know, some cardiovascular, a brisk walk around the block, some hill climbing, an elevated heart rate. You know, if you need to check with your doctor, that's fine. Um, where you're getting a light little sweat up and, you know, you do some body weight exercises or some strength training with a personal trainer, somebody who knows what they're doing so that you don't hurt yourself. But here's the magic. Every single morning, I get up and I put on what I call my magic outfit. What is a magic outfit, you might be thinking? That magic outfit is my workout clothes. So each night before I go to sleep, beside my bed, I put my shorts, my singlet, my running clothes, my gym shoes, everything beside my bed. And just like magic, I wake up. And I don't allow myself to think about it, even if I don't feel like it. If I'm tired, I might have had a big night out. I've had a few too many bubbles. I do don't. I don't mind a little glass of champagne here and there, or a glass of red wine, or you know, I just don't feel like it. I'm a normal everyday woman, just like you. And sometimes I just don't feel like it, but I don't allow my mind to go there. I have a great big glass of water sitting on my nightstand. I drink that glass of water. And then I pull my magic outfit on without thinking about it before I head to the bathroom to brush my teeth and get ready to go to the gym. I actually have a gym in my home. Thankfully, I have one built in so I don't have to get in the car and drive anywhere. But it wasn't always like this. But here's the beauty, girls. Here's the little thing I want to share. When you put that magic outfit on, your physiology changes, your mindset changes, and you instantly 
Stop with the excuses. That magic outfit represents something else. That magic outfit represents a break in the sleeping pattern and something new the next segment of the day. I call it a little segment. And instantly my mind goes straight to the gym instead of moping around in my dressing gown, you know, not wanting to take off your pajamas, not wanting to get ready for the day. And there's just something magic about putting on a certain type of clothes. I mean, think about this for a moment. If you're getting around the house and you've got your tracksuit on and your daggiest jumper, And, you know, you feel a certain way and then wouldn't you agree that just say you're going out to the ball, you're going out to see, you know, to a ball or to an opera for the night and you needed to wear a special gown and really get your hair done and your nails done and your makeup. Do you agree you feel different than when you've got your tracksuit on and your daggiest jumper? And we all get around like that at times. Believe me, I do. (laughs) But then... You're getting ready to go out at night and you've got to put on a beautiful long dress and your high heels and you've got a special purse. You've had your hair and makeup done. You know how it goes, girls. Do you agree that you actually feel different? You stand different. You get your shoulders back. You feel special. You feel a little bit lovely, you know, compared to when you had your dags on. Well, The message I want to share today is, and I hope you're taking notes, and I hope you feel inspired to get your own magic outfit. I would love to know how you go with that. And you pop that beside your bed, and each morning I wake up, I have my big glass of water, I have other rituals and routines, but that's in another podcast, pop my magic outfit on, and even if it's for 10 minutes, I go down to stairs to the gym. I do a couple of stretches, I might get on my running machine, or I might do some weight training, my elliptical, but that's not the point. The point of this message is change your clothes, change your state of mind, which helps you stop with the excuses, and over time you will learn to love the idea of exercise, love the idea of taking care of your body. It's the only place you've got to live, ladies, taking care of your health and well-being, because here's the thing, if you don't take care of self, You know, spend some time taking care of your health, your energy, your vitality. You will end up paying the price of having to take care of sickness and feeling sick and being sick. And that's not what we want. So I hope you got something out of this podcast. I hope you learned a little trick or two. And remember, it's not about how much you weigh, it is about how you feel about yourself. And what I can share with you, and I keep saying this podcast is about gaining clarity, feeling more confident, and feeling really good about yourself and certainty about who you are and where you're going in life. And I can assure you, and I know from my own self, my own story, from hundreds and hundreds of women that I have been a personal trainer for for so many years, a mentor for women in business and life success, uh, wealth creation, I know the power of this magic outfit and, you know, being kind to yourself, learning to love yourself a little bit more and not being so hard on ourselves, you know, beating ourselves up for what we're not. Instead, looking in the mirror and going, you know what, girlfriend, you're doing okay today. So that is my podcast for today. I truly hope you got something out of that and you enjoyed it. And if you learned something, you felt inspired, I would really, really appreciate it if you could give me a five-star review, but more importantly, the butterfly effect. Share this podcast, the G'day Gorgeous podcast that empowers women for life with somebody you care about. Another woman who is feeling frustrated with some area of her life. It might be her love, 
in her health, her relationships, her money situation, her vocation, job, career or business or in her happiness and her personal growth. If you know that she would love to hear some of these messages and these life success lessons that I'm sharing with you that are real, they're raw and they are relatable because I am sure I have walked thousands of miles in your shoes from one woman to another in some form or another and you know help me with this butterfly effect this message is important and together we can impact millions of women globally so I want to say thank you for joining me and listening in I hope you got some notes and cannot wait to hear about your magic outfit and to our next episode next week gorgeous As I always say, be bold, be courageous, and be fabulous. Okay, that's it for this week. I'm Amanda Jane Clarkson, and I look forward to sharing our next podcast with you next week. Bye for now. 